Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. And in this lecture for EC 3400 Analog Electronics, I would like to talk about bass. No, not the kind of bass that Adam Neely plays. This kind of bass, the bass on a bipolar junction transistor. So the symbol that I'm writing here doesn't represent a BJT in its full glory. It specifically represents a small signal model. So all of the quantities here are lowercase letters according to our convention. Now, in the previous lecture, I computed a Norton equivalent circuit looking into the collector. This is used to compute the gain of the common emitter and common base amplifier types, as well as their output impedances. So the collector is always considered an output if you consider it anything at all. You never think about the collector as an input. The emitter, on the other hand, can be considered an input or an output depending on the particular circuit. But in contrast to the collector, the base is always considered to be an input if it's considered to be anything at all in terms of inputs and outputs. You never think about the base as an output. So in this lecture, what we're going to do is we're going to compute a Thevenin equivalent circuit looking into the base. In this particular lecture, we're going to use the pi model for our small signal model. You could also do this derivation using the T model. And you can get the results from the pi model to match the results from the T model using some algebra and some of our known relationships. So you can go back and forth between them. So we're going to compute the Thevenin equivalent circuit looking into the base of the small signal model of the BJT in terms of a Thevenin equivalent circuit seen looking out of the emitter of the BJT. So we have VTE and RTE representing our Thevenin voltage and our Thevenin resistance respectively looking out of the emitter. So what's happening down here? It could be simple, it could be complicated, whatever it is, we're going to assume we can model it as a Thevenin equivalent. Now, what about the collector side? We'll remain agnostic about that. There may be a bunch of stuff out here. It may be simple, it may be complicated, but we'll be able to compute a Thevenin equivalent without really specifying what is happening out here at the collector. So we'll take our small signal model and paste this RTE and VTE to it. Now in the last lecture when we computed the Norton equivalent circuit looking into the collector, we used the R0 approximation when computing the Norton current, but we didn't use it when computing the Norton resistance. Here, we're going to use the R0 approximation for everything. We're going to use it to compute the Thevenin voltage, and we're going to use it when we're computing the Thevenin resistance looking into the base here. So we're going to assume that R0 is infinite, so R0 here essentially goes away, and I0 here is zero. This simplifies what we're doing here tremendously. Okay, so let's compute our Thevenin equivalent looking into the base of the small signal model. Now, the typical way to compute a Thevenin equivalent circuit would be to compute the open circuit voltage, and then you would also then deactivate the independent sources, and then you would find the Thevenin resistance after that by either fixing VB and then finding VI, or you would fix IB and then find VB, and then you would divide those quantities to get the resistance. I'm not actually going to do any of that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to write a KVL equation, and then notice, oh, something that looks like a Thevenin equivalent will just kind of magically pop out. And this sort of thing is really nice when it magically works. Anyway, we'll say that the voltage at the base here is the sum of three voltages. One of them is the voltage down here associated with the Thevenin equivalent voltage of the emitter. And then I have these two drops across the resistors associated with IB times R pi by Ohm's law. And then I have IE times RTE by Ohm's law. Okay, so I would like to write this IE in terms of IB. Now, in a previous lecture, we showed that a certain thing we called IE prime was equal to IB times one plus beta. And this IE prime was the part of the emitter current that wasn't flowing through R0. But here we don't actually have an R0. So I can get rid of the prime here. So I can substitute this in for IE and then I can factor out the IB. And when I do that, I notice, hey, I have a sum of two voltages. 
One of them is just a constant, and the other has the form of Ohm's law. And I remember that voltage source is in series sum, so this equation has the form of a Thevenin equivalent circuit. So let's define Rib to be this expression here, this R pi plus one plus beta times RTE. And then we can write VB equals IB times RIB, that's in the form of Ohm's law, plus this constant voltage VTE. So RIB is my Thevenin resistance and VTE is my Thevenin voltage. So I can take this complicated circuit here and write it as this simple Thevenin equivalent as just a resistance in series with this voltage source VTE. And this will come in handy in computing the input resistance of common emitter and common collector amplifiers. This Thevenin equivalent circuit looking into the base can give us a new perspective on the Norton equivalent circuit looking into the collector that we computed last time. So in that lecture, we had a Thevenin equivalent voltage and a Thevenin equivalent resistance looking out of the base. And now we can replace the small signal model with our Norton equivalent circuit to easily get IB. So recall RIB is this R pi plus one plus beta RTE expression. So I can find IB using Ohm's law. It's just the difference between these Thevenin equivalent voltage sources for the base and the emitter divided by the series combination of resistances. And then I can say, oh, well then my short circuit current must be beta times IB. Now the thing I want to be careful with is to note that we have this equivalent because R0 is being assumed to be infinite. We're using that R0 approximation. If we didn't, then primes would be involved and all of this analysis becomes a lot more complicated. So we can write IC as IB times that beta, where here's our expression for IB. Okay, so this VTB minus VTE, that's something you should remember from the previous lecture. Let us define a capital GM as beta over RTB plus RIB. So then we can write the collector current as capital GM times this difference between the Thevenin equivalent voltages for the base and the emitter. And this capital GM is the same capital GM as what we computed in the previous lecture. And in that previous lecture, we already found three different ways to write it. So here we now have a fourth expression for capital GM. And by the end of next lecture, we'll actually create a fifth expression. So in any given circumstance where you need a capital GM, you can compute the one that's the most convenient. I suggest that you go to Marshall Leach's ECE 3050 website. So 3050 is an earlier number for what's now called 3400 and click on BJT formula summary sheet. So a lot of the formulas on here are more complicated than anything that I'll show here in lecture. Those are formulas that involve not using the R0 approximation, which are awfully complicated and fairly difficult to derive. We're going to use these formulas where the R0 approximation has been used. That's where we assume R0 is infinite, except when we're calculating the Norton resistance looking into the collector. So one thing I do want to warn you about, though, is that this BJT symbol isn't really the full BJT. The actual small signal BJT model is really this BJT symbol plus this R0 resistance out here. The BJT here sort of represents an ideal small signal model without R0. And this is where you have IC prime and IE prime. So in this lecture, we derive this Thevenin equivalent here in the upper left. You notice it's written here as BOC instead of VTE. But if you scroll down to the very bottom, you'll see BOC equals VTE. So if you actually didn't use the R0 approximation, you would have this more complicated VBOC expression. But again, this is just an awful pain to drive. So I won't be using those kinds of expressions in this class.